So it's uh, the day after the US midterm elections. Um, it's been a long night um, and all of us have been watching the results coming in. Um, and they are certainly not all in yet, uh, but still we want to do a very early um, election interpretation round um, with our Aspen Germany transatlantic team. And let me start with Philip. Um, where, where do we currently stand? What do we know? Yeah, I would say right now it's safe to say we're not seeing a red wave or a red tsunami as some commentators and observers have predicted. In the House, it's still likely that the, that the Republicans will have a majority, but especially in the Senate, it's a very tight race and the Democrats still have a chance to um, stay in power there, especially after flipping a very important seat in Pennsylvania. On the other hand, the Republicans also have had some, I would say, stunning results. Um, for example, Governor DeSantis in Florida, who had a really great run, and now, of course, we already have talks about the presidential elections coming up and a probably uh, maybe a candidacy even. Mm -hmm. Trump against uh, DeSantis, huh? And, <laughs> and, and, the stars. Mm, and, and the stars. So Wiebke, no red wave um, as was expected. Um, tell us a little bit about if you're surprised. I am a little surprised, I do have to say, because a lot of polls did see the Republicans uh, with a bigger majority in the House, which they clearly will probably or probably will not win. I mean, they're going to win the House, but not with such a big majority. And Democrats were able to really defend seats that were rated as top pickup opportunities in the House. So that was surprising. Um, also for the Senate. Um, which was predicted to be a very, very tight race, and that's what we're looking at at the moment, but still Democrats um, were able to win, win Pennsylvania. Um, John Fetterman won against Mehmet Oz, and I think that was a very, very uh, decisive sign for Democrats that they're doing better than they thought they would probably themselves, um, and they can now even afford to lose one of their own incumbents and still keep the 50-50 Senate. So. Uh, that uh, doesn't look too bad for Democrats, but we do have to see how um, the remaining races, especially in Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, uh, turn out. Um, but uh, yeah, that has been uh, surprisingly for Democrats, and um, I think Republicans did fall fall short of expectations in the end in this mm -hmm. uh, midterm election. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you already have an interpretation why that is? <laughs> well, it is surprising considering the low approval rate uh, ratings of. Biden, also um, the concern of Americans with the inflation, with the economic crisis, with, high, um, with higher gas prices and so on, uh, and also considering that traditionally the um, president's, uh, president's party loses seats in the midterm elections. Um, I think one thing that uh, went very well for Democrats is the turnout of younger voters. Um, voters under 30 um, voted uh, with the majority for Democratic candidates, and it seems that they really came out this time and really came to the polls and um, did, did make a difference probably in the end. Um, and otherwise, we can also see that a lot of uh, Trump-backed candidates did not do as well as many had thought or potentially feared on Democratic side. So um, maybe the argument with uh, democracy that Biden had made, for example, and many other Democrats as well, did make a difference also in this election. Yeah, interesting. Um, Katya, you took a look at the exit polls, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you looked at which uh, topics really mattered. Um, so which mattered and for whom? Yeah. The, the most highly ranked was the economy um, that stood out above and beyond the other issues, but abortion was also the second most highly um, noted big issue of this election cycle. Much less important, but still on people's minds are crime, immigration, um, but I think we need to really focus on economy and abortion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for Republicans, um, it was more the economy and for Democrats, more abortion? Yes, that was what the polling was saying, but actually uh, we saw that it was the economy is also a concern across the board, which I think is why it's a bit surprising or interesting that we saw that maybe Democrats didn't perform as poorly as um, expected, as Vipka mentioned. Um, and I think that maybe you know comes down to things like candidate quality, uh, which Mitch McConnell himself had noted earlier. Uh, we saw a lot of you know the Republican candidates that made it through that primary season as potentially weaker on a general election stage. 
And I think maybe it's also really underestimating the importance of abortion um, and, and how much that really impacted this year. So a question to all three of you. For the Democrats, is it all fine then? I mean, the red wave didn't take place. Um, so can they lean back and say, OK, um, we are good. Um, let's look at the 2024 elections, but no big, no big threat around the corner. What do you say? I would say absolutely not. <laughs> um, I mean, I think you know we're still looking at a, a divided Congress if the Democrats do take the Senate. Um, I think we still see an incredibly divided country. Um, and as we know, anything can happen in the next two years. Um, and you know, we're going to looking ahead, expecting that Donald Trump will announce any day no. So I think um, we need the country still needs to take a look and make sure that they're saying. Um, on top of misinformation and some of these other things that have played into the election this year. And Vivke, what do you think is Biden going to focus on now? Um, well, I think he's still trying to push his legislative ag agenda if he can, but he's going to face hurdles, especially um, if uh, there is a divided uh, Congress in the end, or even if the Republicans still take uh, the Senate. So that's going to be hard for him. Um, he's still trying to push his agenda uh, still. Um, I think he's also going to keep focusing on the democracy issue. We have seen a lot of election deniers on the ballot across the country in um, this election, uh, both in governor positions, secretary of state positions, uh, congressmen, so really um, anywhere. And I think the latest number was at 169 that had already been conformed in, uh, confirmed in this election. So that's going to be an issue that he has to keep an eye on moving forward, especially uh, with the 2024 20, uh, presidential election coming up. Um, luckily, we have seen some um, governor's elections, such as in Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, also Pennsylvania, where the Democratic candidate uh, prevailed, and uh, which is, a go is good news as far as American democracy is concerned, because governors as well as secretaries of state will have a decisive voice um, in, you know, potentially denying election mm -hmm. results um, and or certifying the uh, results. Mm -hmm. um, and Philip, um, we didn't see any violence, at least, right? Some some predicted there would be violence and, and also big t big time pro technical problems uh, with voting and the voting machine. So that also didn't happen. Th that is good news, isn't it? I would say that so far, yes, it is good news. The democratic process, if you will, um, has been intact in the US. But I think we also still need to remember that we don't have the final results yet. And especially the very contested races, there's still counting going on. And if we remember the last presidential elections, we had some, um, let's say, difficulties or some forms of violence coming up during the counting of the votes. So that's definitely something um, that we also need to look out for now. And um, we are probably heading also for a runoff election in Georgia. So it's going to be a long month until then. So a lot can happen until then. So it's not as in the past anymore that in the night after the elections, we know the results, but it can take a while until all the counting takes place. And then we don't know if some of the races are going to be contested again um, and if the courts have to take a look at it. So um, it can take a while until we have the final results and until we really know how the majorities are going to look um, like in both chambers um, of Congress, the House, and the Senate. So um, stay with us, stay tuned, um, and come on over to our Aspen Germany events, um, and let's talk U.S. elections. <laughs>